What is this? Shh. Can you keep a secret? <laughs> I got another seed order. And it's from Seed Needs. Seed Needs. I needs me some seeds, y'all. Let's go check it out. What did I get in this order? And did I really need it? Hmm. Let's see. Look at this innocent white package. I wonder what is inside. Let's open it up and see. Is it something I really needed? Hmm. With a company name like Seed Needs, I think I needs me these seeds. <gasps> what is it? Summer savory. And I have heard that this makes a wonderful ingredient for potato salad. And I love to grow my own potatoes, so I'll enjoy trying out this summer savory in my potato salad. I grow winter savory. Now it's time for some summer savory. Yum, yum, yum. Ooh, what do we have here? Of course, some beans. Got some top crop bush beans. GMO free, which is typical because home gardeners should not be able to purchase GMO seeds. That's for the big farms. GMO free. I hope that, that continues to be the case anyway. You never know. Okay, top crop bush beans. What is this? Multicolor radish collection. Okay, we always need to grow lots and lots of radishes. I wonder what else there might be because I know I didn't go online just to buy those things. Those are probably impulse, like I need some more. Let's see. I'm sure I already have acorn squash. So this is going to go into my seed rotation. I am getting organized and trying to use up my oldest seeds first. And I always want to constantly have enough seeds to replenish them. So I've got the table queen acorn squash. And... It says used by 12, 2023. So I can't wait too long on them, but they should store for a couple years at least. I don't like to push it. I'd rather be safe than sorry. So within the next two years, I'm going to be using these. What else do we have here? I love nasturtiums. And you know that the flowers and the leaves are both edible. They're very peppery um, to taste, but they are very like invigorating, I would say. So I've got, I've got some ideas about using the flowers in some recipes. If you want to see that, you need to hit like, subscribe, and all that jazz. And what else do we have here? Georgia Southern Collards. And actually, it's interesting, but I live in Washington State, Pacific Northwest, and Georgia Southern Collards actually do grow really well here and they taste really good. So I'm surprised more Northern gardeners don't grow collards. You should go ahead and give them a try. I have Romanesco broccoli seeds as I was going through my inventory, um, but I want to have, make sure I have viable seeds for the future. And I'm gonna do some videos on having your own living seed vault with rotation of your seeds. Follow for more ideas on a seed vault that you actually use, go figure. Sweet marjoram, which is very closely related to oregano, and you might have a difficulty telling the two apart. Marjoram has a kind of more subtle flavor. Burgess buttercup squash. That's also going to go into my seed rotation because I am really hoarding seeds. Um, I, I guess hoarding is probably the wrong word for it. I mean, maybe it's the right word for it. <laughs> um, but I am stocking up on three sisters. So actually, you can call it four sisters, I guess, because I'm really stocking up on beans, squash, 
corn and sunflowers. I really think that those crops are going to come in handy in years ahead, along with a lot of others like the brassicas and the greens. Um, but if you don't have some winter squashes, you definitely need to stock up. I know we all are fond of like, I'm not sure the fond is the right word, but we tend to lean towards the summer squash more. It's a lot of um, more bang for your buck, I guess. And also, you know, we have short term um, like turnaround. We really have like immediate gratification. We really want to have plants that produce food for us right away. We have that immediate payoff. But winter squash are amazing because if you ever have refrigeration issues, a lot of them are good keepers and may last quite a while. Um, should we need them um, in times of famine? I will talk more about that in a different unrelated topic. Yellow brandywine tomatoes. So I'm going to be starting my larger size tomatoes. Um, I think I'm going to do like a batch of planting in the beginning well, I'm going to do in the beginning of February for peppers and maybe mid to late February or very early March for my larger size tomatoes because I want to make sure that they have enough time to mature and we have enough days to technically grow them um, if you start them indoors. So they usually say like 10 to 12 weeks, six to eight weeks prior, but I don't think that's quite enough. I'd say at least eight, maybe nine or 10 weeks. And I'd feel a little bit safer about it, but I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket. So I might do a couple, you know, eight weeks, eight weeks before the last frost. And then maybe a couple, seven weeks, a couple, nine weeks, a couple, 10 weeks. Um, and then or like closer to my last frost date, um, maybe six or eight weeks out, I'm going to do cherry tomatoes, um, but cherry tomatoes grow so vigorously. They kind of take over like a jungle before you're really ready to transplant them out. So I'm going to start with the really big ones, the ones that have to start early. And then a couple weeks later, I'm going to start the cherries and I'm going to stagger them because I really want to make sure that I have lots and lots of tomatoes. And I got black eyed Susans, which I don't really need because I got a bunch of plants from somebody who was like dividing them up and they're doing very well. But I do want, I do want to grow them from seed just because I always like to kind of play with that. So I know what to expect when I gather my own seeds in the future. So I did get quite a little, this is just a little haul here from seeds, seed needs. And I have a really big seed order that um, came in a very large box that I will be doing a video on soon. So you're going to want to hit the bell notification so you can see that video. So the seeds I got here in this order were restocking my current supply. And I like to branch out and have different vendors. The reason might kind of surprise you. And that's because I want to make sure I get viable seeds. And every once in a while, you'll get a bad batch of seeds. And then it's like all of your eggs are in, in one basket. And I want to make sure I have all the different types of seeds. It's kind of like Noah's Ark. Does that make sense? I kind of think of my seed collection as Noah's Ark. And should there be GMO issues in the future, I have enough seeds stocked up from multiple different vendors that if it's a contaminated seed in one vendor, I maybe I have some that are safe from another. So I kind of overdo it. And I was trying to organize my seed collection into these um, binders. I keep changing back and forth from tubs and totes to binders and all sorts of things. And I'm trying to figure out which organization method is going to work best for me. So you're going to want to follow to see what I settle on. I might have to do a mix and match because I have some seed varieties that are really large um, and they don't really fit into the totes, the tubs, or the binders. So I'm finding some issues with all of the different things and I'm going to maybe try to come up with my own solution and I'm going to share that with you later. But if you don't have a good seed stock, 
you want to make sure you use your oldest seeds first and you want to make sure that you have plenty of seeds because you never know what's going to happen in the future you never know with all of the different bioengineering of the different things that could possibly go wrong with our seed supply and just like when the pandemic hit um, a lot of people started gardening and then there were people like ran out of seeds and for some reason some places even like have the seed areas partitioned off and they weren't selling them because it was considered like not essential which it definitely is essential because even a few years of not seed saving could mean that see some seed varieties are lost forever which has been the case with some countries who use GMO seeds for a couple of years they didn't plant their own traditional seeds and they've lost some of that biodiversity and it may not be something that can be salvaged so seed saving buying seeds is your first step growing them is your second step learning how to seed save is your third step and it's probably the most important especially with times as they are moving forward. I'm gonna show you a lot of my seed saving tips on how I save my own seeds and I grow those. Those are my favorites, those are my staples. A lot of them have perennialized or they self seed. You find out what grows really well for you and you save those varieties and you grow them again and again and again and you end up having something that's really reliable, okay? So all these other things that you're trying it's you know it's always a gamble it is kind of like playing the lottery some things grow really well one year and they don't another year sometimes it is the viability of the seeds a lot of times it's the climate maybe you started them too early or too late or you have a late frost or you have exceedingly high temperatures or maybe there's a little bit of neglect or just you know first time trial and error things like that, pest pressure, disease, whatever. So you want to diversify what you have. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. And I will definitely be sharing lots more tips with you. Hit like, subscribe, comment. What seeds are you stocking up on? It doesn't have to be something new, but what seeds are you like your go-to must have multiple years of seeds stashed away for that kind of plant? What is it? All right, everybody, God bless you. And I'll see you on the next video. I have a lot of seeds to show with you, to share with you and to showcase a giant seed order. And I do have a Dollar Tree run planned in the near future when I'm feeling better. All right, everybody, God bless and I'll see you next time.